Coming up on today's show, Tesla Tops Consumer Reports Customer Satisfaction Survey for a second year running, Richard Branson becomes chairman of Hyperloop One, and Elon Musk accidentally tweets his personal phone number for all to see. Hi everyone, it's the last show of the year and we're also just a few episodes from our 200th show. So keep your eyes peeled for some special plans I have for the big 200. We're starting today with the news that the Tesla Model S has yet again topped the Consumer Reports Customer Satisfaction Survey, placing ahead of the Porsche 911 and Chevrolet Corvette. The survey, different from the Consumer Reports Reliability Survey, plots overall customer satisfaction on a per model and per brand basis and gives top marks to the Model S. Although the Model X crossover SUV placed eighth overall, partly due to issues with those massive falcon wing doors, it yet again reiterates that Tesla customers are, for the most part, happy with their Tesla ownership experience, even if their cars have average or below average, depending on the model, reliability. In other words, even if the cars need attention, Tesla customers are happy overall with how Tesla handles those service issues. As you probably know, Toyota has been a little slow when it comes to electric cars, preferring instead over the years to focus on hybrid and then hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. This week, however, Toyota announced it would bring 10 all-electric global vehicle models to market by 2020, with every Toyota model by 2025 offered as both an all-electric and an electrified, so hybrid, plug-in hybrid or fuel cell model by 2025. By 2030, Toyota says it hopes to have 5 million electrified vehicles worldwide, with 1 million of those split between battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell electric. Officially, we've yet to hear pricing for the upcoming Jaguar I-PACE electric SUV, but this week, reservation holders in the Netherlands, one of the I-PACE's key launch markets, were given equivalent pricing by their dealers, ranging from $76,400 for the entry-level I-PACE S through to $98,773 for the range-topping I-PACE first edition. All models will come with 90 kilowatt hours of battery pack as standard and 50 kilowatt DC quick charge. Charging. The entry level is still well equipped with LED headlights, 18-inch wheels and Meridian audio system, while the high-end model adds up heads-up display, air suspension and sunroof, as well as adjustable seats, surround sound and adaptive cruise control, to name just a few things. I haven't got the chance to see the iPace myself, but I can't wait to see how it compares to the Tesla Model X in the real world. Chinese-backed startup Faraday Future isn't doing so well with raising bills and very little hope for the future. Yet it seems out of the ashes of the wannabe Tesla killer, there's a new electric car startup. Called eVelocity, the new startup hasn't an online presence yet, except a very simple website, but a few, few number of former Faraday Future employees are said to have moved there. Of course, there's no expectation that the company will do any better than the one which came before, but it's an interesting development, at least. Solid-state batteries, where the electrolyte is solid rather than a liquid or a gel, have long been considered something of a holy grail for electric cars, thanks to their increased energy density, power density, and longer life. Consequentially, we've seen lots of research and development into solid-state batteries from many mainstream automakers, including Toyota, a Volkswagen, and Ford. Well, this week, we heard a rumour that Honda and Nissan could be added to the list, courtesy of a partnership that would see the two companies work on solid-state battery tech. While Honda confirmed that it is indeed working on solid-state batteries, the rumour wasn't confirmed by Nissan. But with both Toyota and Honda now working on solid-state battery technology and Nissan keen to remain a key player in the electric car world, I think it's likely that it's studying at least some form of solid-state battery tech. Don't you? For the past year or so, there's been quite a lot of attention on Tesla and its progress in bringing Model 3 to market. This week, we learned that Tesla was also under scrutiny last year from the SEC too. I won't go into the details here. The investigation revolved around Model 3 reservation figures and details, but it appears that this particular investigation ended without an incident. That said, a recent Freedom of Information request by Probe's reporter, the site which initially broke the story, resulted in information about finished SEC investigations being disclosed, but also some requests getting denied on law enforcement grounds, meaning that there could still be another investigation into Tesla ongoing. 
Investigations or not, now Tesla is delivering Model 3 to regular customers, it's published details of its mileage warranty, which, as you may know, is different from the unlimited mileage drivetrain and battery warranties offered on Model X and Model S. Instead, Tesla puts a hard 8-year, 100,000-mile, 160,000-kilometre limit on the Model 3 standard and 120,000-mile, 192-kilometre limit on the Model 3 long-range variant. What's also new, however, is a guaranteed minimum battery capacity of 70% during the warranty period, something that Tesla hasn't really done before. I should note, too, that the minimum battery capacity is far better than that of Nissan or Chevrolet, 70%, meaning the Model 3 could be the car to buy if you're worried about battery capacity loss. And to end the trio of Tesla stories, Tesla is really working hard to get those Model 3s out before the end of the year, as well as its other vehicles too, with plenty of news stories this week reporting a massive increase in the number of Tesla Model 3s at storage facilities across the US. Add to that the incredible number of Model S and Model X I've seen recently travelling on transporters along I-5, and I think it's clear that Tesla is very keen indeed to break its 100,000th vehicle delivery target before the end of the year. We'll find out in a few weeks if it hit that target or not. Electrify America, the new subsidiary set up by Volkswagen as part of its Dieselgate penance, has announced the latest part of its electric vehicle infrastructure plan this week. But unlike previous announcements, which focused on rapid DC quick charging infrastructure rollout, this week's announcement focused on home and workplace charging, with 2,800 charging stations promised for 17 major metro areas across the US. The idea? To make electric vehicles more accessible for those who currently don't have any access to charging infrastructure. Of course, 2,800 charging stations is hardly a large number, especially considering the potential expansion in the electric car market over the coming years. But hey, if it helps someone who currently doesn't have an electric car make the decision to switch, I'm all for it. Virgin Hyperloop One, one of two companies trying to bring Hyperloop technology to reality, has announced Richard Branson, he of the Virgin Empire, is now the official non-executive company chairman following Virgin's official acquisition of Hyperloop One. At the same time, it's also announced an additional $50 million in investment ahead of its Series C round of funding. But perhaps the most exciting piece of news is that Virgin Hyperloop One has reached a new maximum test speed of 387 kilometers per hour. That's 240 miles per hour. That's still a way away from the speeds promised us to buy Elon Musk in his Hyperloop Alpha White paper. But as they say, progress is most certainly progress. I grew up on a farm and as such, I've always had a soft spot for the iconic Land Rover. I'm not talking about the poncy Chelsea tractors that go around urban neighbourhoods and never see a spot of dirt. No, I'm talking about the good old-fashioned Defender, a direct descendant of the original Series 1 Land Rover. The original Defender ended production early last year, despite Jaguar Land Rover producing a really awesome off-road electric prototype that really could go anywhere. But when the next generation Defender enters production, Land Rover has confirmed it will come with an all-electric variant. Sure, it won't keep fans of the original Defender happy stylistically, but hey, if it goes off-road and it's all-electric, I'm all in. Last autumn, BMW celebrated selling its 100,000th plug-in vehicle. A few months back, BMW celebrated building its 100,000th i3. This week, it celebrated building its 100,000th BMW with a plug in just one year, showcasing how quickly the company is accelerating its push towards electric cars. To celebrate the milestone, it turned its famous four-cylinder headquarters building into a giant battery, complete with the slogan, the future is electric. Yes, yes, it most certainly is. If you have the kind of hobbies that require you to carry large items or you happen to have dogs, you'll know how useful estate cars or station wagons are. Yet sadly, there really aren't that many options for plug-in car owners who want a useful, practical estate. Which is exactly why coach building firm Quest, from my home county of Norfolk, England, have been busy working on turning a standard Model S into a station wagon. And now it's complete. You may have seen some of the coverage on Fully Charged in recent weeks, and if you haven't, make sure you go and watch the special. I'll link below for you to catch up. They've promised me a ride the next time I'm back in the UK, so I can't wait to get a go. Oh, and do you keep a trash and bore? 
And finally, we've all done it. Sent an email to the wrong person, but dialed someone we didn't want to speak to and accidentally leaked some personal information on social media. Well, it turns out that so too has Elon Musk after he accidentally sent a public message rather than a direct message to the CTO of Oculus with his phone number included. It didn't take long for fans to jump on the chance to call Elon, but he was pretty far ahead of them. Call the number now and this is what you get. By the gods, you've done it. Somehow you found your way here to me. Clever move, Elon. Clever move. Well, that's your lot for today and for the year. I'll be back in 2018 with more awesomeness, but I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out to support this channel this year, either through donations or Patreon, or just by watching these videos on YouTube and the ads that come with them. This channel has grown immensely, and I'm so grateful that you've all helped Transport Evolved evolve. Next year, we're moving to our new office. We're getting our first three-person team together to cover CES, and we are now also accepting Bitcoin donations. Yeah, I caved. There's a donation link below. All that's left for me to say is to wish you a very peaceful holiday season and new year, however and whatever you're celebrating, and I'll see you next year. Oh, and as always, keep evolving.